have to educate ourselves about this history, we're not going to be able to address anything if we don't understand the damage and the history, and we've done a very poor job of that um, across the globe, but particularly here in the United States, where most school children are taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America uh, without recognizing that were, there were millions of indigenous people here. And that gives rise to a lot of ignorance and poor policy and bad decision making. And when that narrative of racial difference made us comfortable with two and a half centuries of enslavement. And uh, too many American school children were taught that slavery was pleasant, that enslaved people liked being enslaved, that it wasn't brutal, that it wasn't violent, that enslavers were good and noble people. And that false narrative will block you from the kind of repair that has to happen. And that's why I don't believe that slavery ended in 1865, it just evolved. And until we contend with that, we're not going to be able to effectively address issues like police violence, like over-incarceration, like discrimination. So the beginning, for me, is truth-telling about the history. And that's why I talk so much about truth and justice, truth and repair, truth and reconciliation, truth and restoration. I just think these things are sequential, and we haven't done that in too many places across the globe. And that's why memorialization is such a critical part of the process. I think when people use the word reparations, they actually think some check in the mail. I think we actually have to open ourselves up to the multiple ways in which repair is going to mean doing things differently, talking differently, um, memorializing differently. The UN and other institutional international organizations can contribute to our struggle by affirming of these basic realities and the need for, for justice and equality.